with River King Outdoors and your fishing report. And boy, do we have a doozer for you today. We've got lots of fishing action that's gonna be on here. We're also gonna go over baits that we have been using, setups with our poles, reels, line, the different lures that we're using and how we're catching all these fish. Um, we got an actually a good surprise. Uh, Cameron, one of our part-time got guides caught a giant yesterday and uh, we've got video of that as well so do appreciate all the support that we've been getting um gonna have to sit through a couple of our ads here but hey that's how we pay for this it's how we're able to do these reports also want to remind everybody to like share and subscribe if you guys can share this video on facebook and the different pages we'd really appreciate that and the more of that support we get the more of these that we can do okay we're gonna get the ads out of the way this is gonna be a long video because there's a lot of fishing that's gonna be on here we've got probably well over a half hour of content of fish being caught which you're gonna see up in the screen as well while we're going through all of this um, we're gonna go through weather wind what we're getting them on and what the report has been and what to expect coming up so first we've got our waterfowl season. Uh, we are also Arizona waterfowl guides, maybe known as AWG. We have our three day all inclusive lodge stays on our riverfront lodge here. Um, you can get more information at this website here. That is almost booked up. We have one lodge left mid December for four guys. And then we have two spots available also mid December for two guys. And then the lodges are booked up. Um, our day hunts, January, our single day hunts for waterfowl are just about all filled up as well. January's filled up, December's halfway, and November is about a quarter of the way through. So please get your reservations in. We get calls every single year, a month or two leading up to the season, and we're already booked up, and guys are whining and complaining. Oh, uh, we want to go hunting with you guys. We want to book with you guys. We're not kidding when we say we book the entire season well before the season starts. So go to this website, give us a call, get your dates in and come hunting with us. You'll have a good time. Second, we've got a drift boat for river fishing available this Friday. Excuse me, Friday's booked. This Saturday, Sunday, and Monday. We have one boat, can hold two anglers plus the guide. That's all we've got available here in the near future. So just Saturday, Sunday, Monday, we have one boat. The other two are booked. So if you want to get out here and get on some of this fishing action on the river targeting stripers, visit this website, give us a call, get your deposit in, and we'll get you out on the water. Third and final announcement, dove season running September 1st through 15th. Opening weekend is booked and the last weekend is booked, but we have some various dates available in between that. Um, it's 150 bucks a day per person to go dove hunting. We are the official guides out there on tribal lands, so we can get obtain, obtain your permits for you. Of course, you'll have to pay for them. Permits this year for dove hunting are 45 bucks. Uh, we can obtain those for you. The hunts include lunch, soft drinks, shade, and bird processing at the end, and of course, good times. All right, now that we're through the ads, let's get down to business. We are going to start off with weather. Sorry, I got so much today. I'm not. I'm. I'm going with a little bit of notes. Usually, I've got it all up here, but we got too much going on today in this report and the how-to section. So I got some notes. Please excuse me. Thursday, a high of 112, low of 88 degrees. That's today. This afternoon, winds should be 15 to 25 miles an hour out of the south. So if you're up on the lake later in the afternoon, be careful if you've got a low profile boat, it gets a little sketchy. Friday, high of 112, low of 83. Um, we'll get into winds again there, I got ahead of myself. Saturday, it's gonna be a little warmer, 113, a low of 86. Sunday is gonna be downright brutal with 114, a low of 89. Okay, getting into the wind. Thursday, meaning today, it's 15 to 25 miles an hour. Later on this afternoon, right now I'm looking at the water and it's not too bad. It's blowing about five to eight knots right now. Um, still a beautiful day out there. I've lived, there's nobody on this river right now. I've seen two jet skis go by since this morning. Completely empty. Bizarre, you guys should be out there fishing and not watching this. 
Friday, we have lighter winds. That's tomorrow, 10 to 16, blowing out of the south. Um, morning is gonna be super light, 10 to 16 in the afternoon. That's not really much, so you can pretty much fish through all of that. Saturday, light winds early, increasing 10 to 20 after about that two, three o'clock, calming down again right before sunset. Sunday is a carbon copy of that light winds. The winds will be blowing out of the south this entire time. Um, moving up to 10 to 20 miles an hour uh, later in the afternoon and then calming down right before that sun goes down. All right, river depths in the Laughlin and Bullhead area. Thursday, meaning today, three units till 8 a.m. It's about 11 right now. And uh, the water's already dropping. It's gonna drop down to two Oops. units and stay there until about two or three o'clock this afternoon. It's gonna come back up to three units. So if you're gonna go out there today um, on a boat, just be careful in the Laughlin Bullhead area. The water is low until later this evening. Friday, tomorrow's a great day to get your boat out in the Laughlin Bullhead area. It's gonna be three units the entire day. Same with Saturday, gonna be three units all day long. Be careful of the jet skis. It'll get a little crowded after about 10 o'clock when they start launching the rentals. Sunday, three units all day long. And then Monday, two units all morning long until about two or three o'clock in the afternoon. All right, let's get to the good stuff. We're gonna get into Willow Beach here. Willow Beach, we were out there during the full moon a few days ago. We fished one session during the day, skunked. Another session in the evening, all the way to about 11 p.m. Didn't see anything on the live scope. Nothing big, just some trout and some smaller guys. Uh, nothing that we were willing to go after. We were after those giant skunk city. However, yesterday things changed. Our very own, you might even recognize Cameron. Cameron's one of our guides on our drift boats. So I'm gonna turn this video over to Cameron. He's got a little report of how things were going yesterday and it looks like things are gonna continue to improve because that full moon has waned. Um, we're not in that full moon cycle anymore. Things got a little funky up there. There was some really good windows to catch them during the full moon and then some really bad windows, but that wound has maned, waned, excuse me. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn this over to Cameron. He's got, there's some fishing action here and he caught a beast yesterday. This is Cameron and George. We're just Hi. on our way back from Willow Beach. Uh, bite wasn't super strong, but we got a 20.5 pounder off the dock on frozen sardines, brined with red food coloring. Uh, another dude on the dock got a 19 pounder, another couple guys in boats, a uh, guy in a kayak we got some pictures of, got a 26 pounder right out in front of the fishing dock. On swim baits. On swim baits, mostly swim bait bite, so. We're lucky enough to get the sardine. Yep, yep, we got him on a sardine, got lucky. So, that's how it went down today. Cameron hooked up on a fatty, is peeling fucking, peeling fucking line, but we think it's stuck on the buoy maybe. Yeah. Hey. Yeah. <laughs> with, the, with the fucking chef salad. Yeah. We never we never broke digits, dude. So we get doubles. We'll be happy today. It'll be well worth this fucking two hour drive we did. Where do you where do you live? Vegas. You guys are from Vegas. Yeah. Was an hour two hour drive hour drive. Yeah. It's all right. It's all right. It's it's all right. Just don't fucking yeah. What contest you got? Twenty five pound. But it's braid, so as long as it's not rubbing too much. Hell yeah. Cameron just landed this. It's almost nineteen pounds. It's eighteen and a half pounds. Red food coloring with them. Is that yeah. You got a rope stringer? I don't want to put this on a chair. You know I do. Yes. Oh my God. Okay, moving further down on Lake Mojave into the Cottonwood area, the smallmouth and largemouth bite has kicked into gear yesterday. I was out there catching them on top water in the early morning. Um, I'm gonna go over what we were catching those on, but it was the six cents catwalk. I'm gonna go 
Once we get done with the port, I'm gonna go in, I'm gonna show you all the different baits we're using up on the lake um, to catch these small mouth and large mouth. The bites fire right now. It was a little funky over the full moon. There was times where the bite would be good for a couple hours and then completely shut off for the rest of the day and then good again for a couple hours. It was just all over the map, but right now it's good. There's a good surface bite, um, drop shot, and square bill crankbaits in the shallow rocky banks for largemouth and smallmouth bass. Ditto, moving down into the Princess Cove area. Same thing, except a little bit deeper out, we're finding them on those deep rises in about 20 to 30 feet of water. Drop shot and jigs have been the way to go. Again, in the Princess Cove area, there's also that top water bite in the morning and it's just that first hour and a half from safe light till about six o'clock 6 30 and then it cuts off and then you got to go back to the other lures to get them but up in the shallows up against any kind of structure rocky banks in the shallow um, even up to 10 feet they're coming up and getting them um, you can see some videos going here now um, that had that in there um, that top water bite there's nothing like a top water catch super super fun Striped bass has been extremely slow up here on the lake. Um, guy, some guys are picking them off here and there um, on the slow troll. Uh, deep water, I mean, they're getting a couple here and there. Um, not, not very much in the striper action. It's all about that uh, smallmouth and largemouth bite. So they're now working back down towards Catherine's Landing. Again, that top water bite early in the morning is fire. These fish are spread out more in the Catherine's Landing. You're going to find them shallow and deep. Drop shot, square bill crank baking, square bill crank baiting on the banks. Wow. Can you say that? See, she sells seashells by the seashore. <laughs> Anyways, um, that bites fire all day long, morning till night. Drop shot, jig, and square bill crankbaits on the bank. All right, now we're going to get down into the river in the Laughlin and Bullhead area. If you saw the report last week, we went over the baits, these soft baits, these stripers are blowing up on everything swim baits, soft baits, jerk bait bites, a little bit slow, all up and down the river. If you can find a back eddy, stripers from the little school size eaters, the tacos all the way up to 15, 16, 17, 18 pounds. There is a ton of fish out there. So get out there and get yourself some fish. Um, now we're gonna get into the products that we're using. Now we're not sponsored by any, maybe one of them we are, um, but hey, we're just gonna show you what's working. Okay, so up on the lake, we're gonna start off with the setups that we're using. So what I like to use for drop shotting is the St. Croix Triumph. This is a seven foot rod in the medium to light. And then I've also got the Shimano next, next wave. Um, this setup right here is gonna cost you a couple hundred bucks. Um, we have it rigged up with eight pound fluorocarbon. Um, you don't got to use the expensive stuff. I fish so much, it just gets so pricey. And I'll be honest, I can't tell the difference uh, between the real expensive fluorocarbon and this. Now, cheap fluorocarbon sucks, except for I've had a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot of good luck with the Bass Pro Shop Excel fluorocarbon. This stuff is just as good as any of that $30 brand, uh, $30 a real uh, spool brand stuff. Um, I love this stuff, it works great. You get it at Bass Pro Shop, it's $11 for a spool of this versus 30 bucks for the other stuff. And I'll tell you what, I can't tell the difference and I fish every single day. Um, I go through a lot of this because again, I've got to re-rig, re-tie, re-spool all the time. We're out there from sun up to sundown pretty much every day. Okay, so getting into our drop shot setup, what I like to use, here is a drop shot hook number two, six cents. Now, a lot of the other brands are just as good, but you can see how this shank turns in on itself here a little bit. Really like to use that hook. It's a number two. And then since it's so windy out here, most of the time I have a three eighths. 
You don't got to spend expensive stuff. You're going to hook and lose a lot, hook up on the bottom and lose a lot of these. I just use the Eagle Claw 3 8 and it also has the little snap swivel deal here where you snap the line into it. I tie a square knot onto that. Um, I also do my setup where I'm leaving just only about that much leader. Now, the only time I change this and make that a little bit longer is if there's grass on the bottom. If there's grass on the bottom, you don't want your bait sunk down there in the grass. You want your weight down in that grass and your weight and your bait floating right above it. So that's our drop shot setup. Um, if you don't know how to tie a drop shot, um, scroll down through our videos. We'll show you how to tie one up in there. Uh, I'm not going to go through all that now because we have so much to get through right now. So anyway, so that is the drop shot setup that we're using. Now I'm going to show you the different baits that I'm using on the drop shot. Now this one is used so much by so many people, but there's a reason it just works. This is the four and a half straight tail Robo Worm by Morning uh, in in blah, 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 in Morning Dawn color. Um, these things, simple nose hook right through the nose these will catch fish more consistent than any bait out there um, sometimes they get a little slow on these because you know the fish are conditioned to these a lot of people use these probably the most popular drop shot bait out here but you're going to catch both small mouth and large mouth on this very very good bait um, i like to mix it up when in the early morning i like to use a darker color same thing in the robo worm but I'll go to the five and a half, and I like the Aaron's Magic color. So this is the Robo Worm, Aaron's Magic it's called, and this is the five and a half straight worm. This I like to use when it's low light conditions, a little bit darker, a little bit easier for the fish to see the profile, give it some contrast. Now there's that misnomer that you wanna throw a chartreuse bait. When it's dark out, there is nothing worse. You might as well just shoot yourself on the foot and jump off the boat. Big mistake. Dark when it's dark, light when it's light remember that rule another one that i really 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 like and i want to open it up because these stink the 5150 great bait it's garlic scented this is in that green pumpkin and this is a six inch straight worm looks pretty much just like the robo worm um but this has got a little bit of scent i like to use this all throughout the day especially if i'm fishing deeper where it's a little bit darker down there same deal on the drop shot. Now another drop shot that I like to use is the Jackal Crosstail Shad. Now this is kind of like a flatworm. So you can see it, it's salted. It's got a little bit of a tail here with the wing on it. You're gonna put that hook right through the flat side so this is facing up. This is the Jackal Crosstail Shad. It's a four inch and they call this color Baby Bass. Really like this color, especially this time of year when there's a lot of bait in the water. This works excellent. Okay, moving on. Another color I like, which in the video, I'm catching quite a few fish on this one. This is the Robo Worm four and a half straight worm. And this is the Margarita Mutilator. I love that name. So it's a purple worm. You can use this both early morning and throughout the day. Same deal, hook it right through the nose. So that is the Robo Worm Margarita Mutilator. One of my favorite bait names. How <laughs> they came up with that one, you got me. Okay, we've seen this one. This is the Aaron's Magic. This is the six inch straight. Okay. And I said five and a half on the Robo Worm, on the larger worm. I was wrong, it's six inch. Here it is here. That's in the morning dawn. The next thing, now, with these square bills, they're super light. Um, it tends to get real windy out here. So if you're not really good with a bait caster, you can throw this on your spinning rod setup. Um, but have a minimum size reel of a 3500. I use these Shimano Next Wave 3500s. Um, those will work for this. I use them for both my drop shot. If it's really windy and you have to cast into the wind, it's better to cast downwind, but if you have to cast into the wind. Now on Mojave, the, this square bill color right now is smashing the hell out of them. The reason being, there's a lot of small bluegill um, around the beds. And these beds are up close on those shallow, rocky banks. So if you're throwing the square bill 
This is in the bluegill color. Now this is the Bass Pro Shop brand XPS. I'm super, super, super impressed with these guys. Um, a lot of their stuff used to be junk, but for whatever reason, they're really stepping it up. These are literally only four bucks a piece at Bass Pro. And they honestly compete with all the top brands now. They really stepped up and started making a quality bait with quality hooks. Um, again, this is the square bill in bluegill color. Another bait that's working shallow, the Lunker Hunt swim bait. This little four inch Lunker Hunt comes pre-rigged with the uh, weight here and a weed guard running this also through that in the various colors. I like this off-white one. Um, again, that's on the shallow rocky banks where you're gonna find those bluegill beds. So that one works good. You can do that in the same setup. The next bait on this same, oops, same on this St. Croix setup. Um, this here is a six cents in the shad color, square bill. It's their version of the sexy shad, only it's not as bright blue. I don't really like that bright blue. More of like a deep sea green with a yellow side and a flashy little silver on there. Another one to run through where you find the banks that have the bluegill beds on it. These are gonna knock them dead. You're gonna get a lot, a lot of bites on that. You're gonna have to weed through. There's a lot of smaller fish on the banks. Not as big as the out, outer size fish, but you're gonna get a lot of action and every once in a while get that banger fish. Now, for the top water. Oh, excuse me, I'm missing one bait. All right, now, this bait on those deeper rises out there I was talking about in the Princess Cove and Catherine's Landing area. And I forget the name of this, but you can find it if you Google it. This is made by Berkeley and it's specifically made for forward-facing sonar. However, you don't need forward-facing sonar to catch fish on these. These things sink fast, they're light, they're small. Cast these and bounce these around. So you're, you're basically kind of what they call hover strolling, bouncing them, you're not so much swimming it back, you're bouncing it up, just like you work it, just like I was talking about in last week's report on uh, for the stripe bass where we're using those soft baits. But this is the Berkeley, it's called forward-facing sonar something. Um, it's specially made, if you just Google it, it's gonna come up everywhere. This is one of their signature baits now. This thing's knocking them dead, especially in that 20 to 30 feet of water. Just bounce this around along the bottom. Don't hit the bottom. You wanna be a couple feet up off the bottom. Bounce this around back to you, around those deeper ledges, and you're gonna kill it on that. Again, I still use eight pound fluorocarbon on this. No need to go super heavy. Same, I do use the medium heavy rod for that because the deeper fish, I want a little bit more backbone to pull them up out of the rocks. So if I'm fishing that deeper stuff, the only thing I change on my seven foot, well, this is actually a seven and a half foot. So I'll go to a seven and a half foot on this spinning setup and go to medium heavy. So I have a little bit more backbone to turn those fish because um, you're fishing a little bit deeper. Now, for my top water setup, I use the Shimano SLX bait caster. I also have these in DC. I'll be honest, I'm not too stoked on the DC. Um, unless I'm using a really heavy bait on it, I don't like the DC so much, so I like the one without the anti-backlash. Um, this one, you can really whip your baits out there pretty dang far. And then this rod is the seven and a half Mojo Bass Medium Fast. Or excuse me, this is a seven one Medium Fast. Um, and this is made by St. Croix Mojo Bass. These come with a lifetime guarantee. No, I'm not sponsored by them, but just giving you a tip where if you're rough on your rods and reels, there's certain ways to go, and St. Croix has a lifetime warranty on their rods and reels, so that is definitely a way to go. Now this has been my top, oh, I got line going on the screen. This has been my top bait for top water. Now there's, I'm using this, so it's top bait because I'm casting it more than the others. Um, now this is the Six Cents Catwalk in the shad color. You can see how it's got really clear, it's just a dark gray top. A little bit of a purple hue on the bottom. 
and you just walk this and I burn this in. I don't walk it slow. I am burning this in. Now, when I first start casting in the morning, I'm going to use a Zara Spook in all black, straight black or straight dark purple. And the reason being is it gives a fish a little bit better of a target to hit with that contrast before the sun's out. So I'll throw that about the first half hour and then I'll switch over when the sun starts peeking up and you can see a little reflection off the water. Then I'm going to go to a lighter color bait. Um, I do like the noise because it's going to be low light, whether you're fit all the way through that first hour and a half, two hours in the morning, it's going to be considered low light. So I like some rattles in there. So the Zara Spook I use first in black or dark purple, and then I move on to the Six Cents Catwalk. All right, boys and girls, please share, like, subscribe, share this thing on Facebook for us. More we get of that, the more we can put out. Hope you enjoyed the video. Enjoy the last here of uh, the footage. I know I didn't talk all the way through it, but there's still some more fishing action on here. We really appreciate everybody's support and we'll see you sometime in seven to 10 days. Have a good one.